Welcome to an Unreal Engine VR tutorial. This is legitimately an Unreal Engine VR tutorial. If you're here from my actual YouTube channel, I've got an actual video coming very soon, but I thought that I'd make a an actual tutorial on this because it's extremely complicated and I haven't seen anyone do this interaction system properly, so I thought I'd do it for actual Unreal Engine creators out there who are working on a VR project. I've seen tutorials from VR Playground, GDXR, Sir Fonzie, who all tried to do an interaction system like this, but they never really got it perfect, but I found a way to do it. So without any further ado, let's get into this. We're going to be making a simple lever and a simple drawer so that you can pull out and in. And I've got some statics here for a simple drawer and then a simple lever there as well. So the first thing that we want to do, open our grab component blueprint, which is in the VR template folder here. We want to open the grab type. So firstly, in the grab type here, we have literally, they've put in a custom one already and we just want to change that to constrained or you can call it restricted or anything like that now we want to go to the blueprint for our grab component and we want to find an event dispatcher on grabbed here we want to create a new parameter which is a motion controller parameter so do that and then we want to call it just motion controller so we've got a motion controller input called motion controller perfect now we want to go over here to open up the try grab function come down here we want to compile. This is going to error, but don't worry. Right click, refresh the node, and plug the motion controller into the motion controller variable right here. And that's all that that's all it is for these two. So we can close down the grab component blueprint and the enumerator there. That's all the setup basically. Now we can go straight into the blueprint and create our lever. We're going to start with the lever. I'll have a chapter on the video if you want to find the drawers instead. The lever is going to be entirely rotation based and then the drawers are going to be location based because you're moving it in and out on a restricted plane or axes. Let's open up our lever blueprint and let's put in our lever static mesh. You can literally use anything. This was taken from Sketchfab. So let's drag them into there. I'm going to attach my lever to the body of this and then I'm going to make sure that it's rotated correctly. I'm going to use world location up here to position it into the center. Let's position our lever into the right spot as well. Let's make sure that's right in the center there. All right, cool. That's all lined up. If the static mesh for your lever, the origin isn't at the bottom of where you want it to be rotating from, then all you have to do is go in here, create a scene, position that to where you want it to be rotated. Then you can parent that to that. And then all you have to do is rotate the scene and the lever will rotate with it. But in my case, uh, the lever is perfectly fine as it is already, but we just gotta make sure that it's in the correct spot. Let's open up the static meshes for both of these guys. I'm going to disable the collision. Okay, this doesn't have collision anyway, so that's fine. I am gonna add a simple collision to this. I'm gonna remove the collision first of all, and then I'm gonna add a simple box collision. I'm gonna position this box collision just at the location that you want to be able to grab onto. So for our example, we have a little handle here, which we're going to position this onto. So let's do that and let's position it onto there. Perfect, that's all we have to do. And save that. And that's the only collision that you can grab onto within this lever. So perfect. Right, now let's add our grab component as a child to the lever here. Now we wanna change the grab type that we created earlier to constrain. Let's save that, make sure that's all good. Uh, let's reset all of the rotation location here. And let's make sure that this grab component is directly at the top of where you want to grab in the handle. All right, perfect. So we've got our, our grab component at where you want to grab. So now let's add event, add on grabbed and add another event on dropped. We can delete these other nodes, we don't need them. So what you want to do now is you want to promote this motion controller here to a variable. Just keep it as motion controller, that's fine. And we want to set this down here and we want to set that to null. Just leave that over here for now. Now we are going to create a new function and we're going to call this update rotation. Call it update rotation. We want to grab the name here, copy that because we're going to set timer by function name and we're going to paste the name of the function into there. Perfect. Right, now you want to click on looping and make sure that the time is something like this. If your computer, if you have a semi-weak computer uh, that, are, that isn't able to handle this or you notice some lag during this being called, then you can change this to 0.2 and that'll be absolutely fine. But if you have a higher end PC and you want it to be as fresh as possible, then changing that to one is absolutely fine. So we want to grab the return value there, promote to variable and just call this timer. And then you want to grab this timer down here and go clear and invalidate timer by handle. Plug that into there and then plug this 
into here. So I should probably talk you through what this is actually doing. Essentially, when you grab it using the grab component, it's setting the variable as the motion controller, which is literally just the motion controller that you're using to grab the component. And we are going to start continuously running this function down here, update rotation. And we're going to be doing that every 0.01 second. Then when you release it, you can clear and invalidate this timer. So it will stop doing the loop. And then you can invalidate this variable as well and just clear whatever is set to it. So now let's head inside of our update rotation. So I've got this blueprint up on my other screen. So what you're going to do is going to get your grab component over here and you want your motion controller as well. So you're going to get the world location or sorry, get world transform of your motion controller. You're finding where it is in the world. And then you want to make relative transform. This is giving you a position of where it is relative to our grab component here. So we'll get world transform for this as well. And we'll plug that into relative two here. And we can split this struct pin so that we only have the location to worry about there. Now with our grab component, we are going to get its relative location like so. And we're gonna do subtract and we're gonna subtract it from the relative location of the motion controller. Now we can split this struct pin so that we only have the certain axis that we want to use. Then you're gonna get the thing that you need to rotate it around the origin point. So for me, it's just my lever. But if you have a scene in to rotate it around, then you can use that instead. And we're gonna get the relative rotation of that. We're going to split the struct pin. So first you want to check the relative location of which one we're going to want to be moving it on. So it looks like the one that we're going to be moving here is the Z axis here, which means that we're going to be using the Z axis for this. And we're going to want to add and we're going to add that to whichever this axis is. And we can see that this axis is the X axis, whichever way we want it to move. That's the axis that we're going to use for this one. So the X axis plus the Z axis there. And because it's a level, we're going to clamp this with a clamp float and we're going to find the amount that we want to clamp it by. So I don't want it going past there. Uh, I'd say around there is fine. So 70. So I want it to go up and down as well. So we're going to do minus 70 and plus 70 as the angle that we're going to be able to use here. And then finally, we're going to set the relative rotation. There we go split this struct pin and choose the axis that you want to rotate it on. For me, it's going to be the Z and then plug the other axis in to this of the ones that you haven't used. And now you just want to plug in that function into there. And there you go. This should work. Uh, we're going to test it now. We're going to bring it into our scene. If this doesn't work, this is going to be incredibly embarrassing. All right, let's check if this works. VR preview. Here we are in the game. Grab onto there. And it doesn't work. All right, where have I gone wrong? I'll tell you what, let's create our scene. Maybe I will need to parent that to that. Let's get our scene and let's put it right in the middle of there. And then let's reset all of this to that. Is this gonna, is this gonna work now? All right, I figured it out. It wasn't the Z axis that I need, it's the Y. As you can see there, the Y is the one that I need. So all I've got to do is go to my function here, get rid of the Z, get Detach the Z ones, attach my Y, plug that into there. There we go. So we're just going to use the Y instead of the Z. That's what all the code looks like now with our Y connected. And let's hope that this works this time. No, it does not because I'm still rotating the lever. I meant to rotate the scene. There we go. Okay. Let's make sure that this works. There we go working as it should and it and as you can see it clamps there and you're not able to put it down any further than that obviously it looks a bit weird with the mesh that i've got there but obviously you can change that to whatever mesh you want i'll do a quick rundown of the code once again so essentially all we're doing is when we're grabbing it we're creating creating the variable of the motion controller we're setting a timer by the function name that we've got down here and we're looping that every 0.01 second and we're setting that as a variable then when you drop it we're cancelling and clearing this timer so that it doesn't keep running over and over again and then we're invalidating this variable here then over here we're getting a relative transform of the motion controller we're finding the x-axis of where 
where the motion controller is in relation to the grab component. We're minusing that from there and we're getting the X axis and we're adding that to the axis that we want it to rotate on. We're clamping that here and we're setting it over here. And obviously we're doing that to the one that we actually want to rotate. So before I was rotating this and for some reason that wasn't working. So I had to create a scene, which I told you to do at the start, which I didn't do for some reason. And then that works perfectly. Right, there we go. That's how you do the lever. Copy this code all we want. And now we're gonna move on to the drawers and the drawers are a bit more complicated. So without any further ado, let's create our draw blueprints. Just call this draw. Let's add our statics into here of our drawer. Boom. There we go. We have our drawer. Now for this one, adding the collision on the bit that you want to grab is not going to work because if you're creating a drawer like I am and you want to be able to open it and find the things that are inside it, obviously you want the things that are inside it to stay inside it and they're only going to stay inside if the inside has collision, but that's easily changed. All we have to do is add a capsule collision here and you can do this for all the drawers in here, but for this example, I'm just going to do it for the top one here. So we have our capsule here. What we're going to do is we're going to shape this to the object that we want to be able to grab onto. For instance, here it's going to be our handle and we're literally just going to put it right on the handle there. Make sure that it's right in the middle. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees and we're going to change the radius to be, make it slightly bigger so that it's a lot easier to grab in VR and make sure that it's centered properly. There we go. Right, so that's that done. Then what we want to do is we want to make our static mesh the child of the collision that we've just created. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a spline. Uh, we've got our spline mesh right here. We're going to select the end one. And we're going to set this to 200 on the Y, 100 like that. We're going to see it's going on the Y axis and I want it to be able to be pulled out to about here. So 170 is fine. So we just have to remember that number 170. All you have to remember is how far out you want it to be able to be pulled out to. We're going to set the starting point of the spline to 0, 0. And we're going to set the end of the spline to be 170, like our thing is. So remember 170, we're going to get the locate the Y location of our collision here. We're going to copy that. We're going to go over to our spline. We're going to get the first point in our spline and we're going to paste that in there. There we go. And now we're going to grab the end point of our spline. And we're literally, we've got 170 saved in here. And we're going to do add and then we're gonna paste that in there and it'll automatically add it and it'll put it 170 above the amount that this is at. So there we go, we've got 170 over here. Now that we've got all of that set up done, we're gonna create a grab component under the capsule collision that we've just created. And we're gonna set this obviously again to constraint. So now we're gonna do exactly the same process as it is with the lever. We're gonna create on grabs, on drops, and we're gonna do exactly, tell you what, we can even copy and paste this over. So let's just copy paste that over, paste that over. And let's just connect all these. This is gonna be exactly the same. And then all we have to do is create our variables done. But we are gonna change this name to update location because that's what we're gonna be doing. It's not gonna be rotation this time, it's gonna be location. And we're gonna create our function, obviously update location, there we go. Now we're gonna do basically exactly the same premise as before, we're gonna get the world location of the capsule as well as the motion controller, or we're gonna get the transform of the get, no, this is gonna be get world transform, world transform, there we go. And we're gonna get the world transform of the capsule as well. And we are going to make relative transform relative to the capsule component. So we've got our relative transform here. We are now going to split this struct pin and we're gonna split the struct pin of the location as well. You don't need to worry about rotation or scale, we're just focusing on the location. What axes do we wanna bring it out on? Well, for this axis, it's gonna be, as you can see, Y. We're gonna be wanting to pull it out on the Y, so the Y is what we're gonna be focusing on here. So we're gonna drag out from the Y, we're gonna add, and we are also gonna get our capsule, and we're gonna get the relative location of the capsule split this truck pin and find the Y on that as well. Actually, I'll make this look a bit nicer. There we go. So what this is doing is it's finding the relative transform for the motion controller in relation to where the capsule is. It's finding only the Y axis and it's adding this to the Y axis of the capsule component. Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add a clamp 
clamp float, not clamp axes. And then here we're going to drag in our spline. So here we're going to get location at spline point. And we're going to duplicate this because we have two spline points. We can leave coordinate space as local on both of them. But we need to set for the second one point index to be one as this is the second point along the spline. We're going to split the struct pin on both of these values. And on the first spline point, we're going to get the return value of the Y, plug that into our minimum. And then the same with the maximum on the second spline point. And that is literally just going to lock it between the two spline points so that it doesn't go beyond that. Now we want to do the same thing. Set relative location this time. Set relative location split the struct pin of that and then we're going to plug our y into there and then make sure that the x and the z are plugged into their respective values as well and then plug that into the function and there you go that is literally all it should be let's make sure that i haven't done anything wrong and let's just put that there and if you want to do it for the rest of the drawers as well all you have to do is duplicate all of this and do it the amount of times that there are drawers and then it's literally the same principle for all of these drawers here so without any further ado let's make sure that i haven't cocked anything up and let's test it in vr here we are let's teleport over to the drawer and let's make sure that it works i hit my microphone okay here we go there it is it snaps to the hand and it doesn't go further than that spline location there and uh yeah that's basically it i am so happy with how that has turned out and i've i've refined this code as much as possible so that it's as simple to understand and hopefully you can understand it if you want to ask me any questions obviously put them in the comments but you can apply the same principle not just to levers or drawers you can do the same thing for opening doors you can use the lever thing for that because it's literally just rotating it on an axis isn't it you can do it for like horns like a train horn you know when you pull in on a horn you can do that same thing you can copy this drawer you can just make sure that it's on the z axis instead of the Y. Don't forget to subscribe and good luck on your VR project.